to slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll show up I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up Do so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time You're delirious, mysterious Because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains at last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last Yeah now that I've been put through, through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Gonna learn the Consequence of being incompetent Mental health is confidence Dreams and some honestness I'm not here to save the day That's for you to take away I could play a million mind games But instead I say Something not illogical Something that is topical Rub it on and watch it go Make yourself unstoppable Dreams are irresponsible But they're always possible If you just believe You could be so remarkable Thoughts What's going on everybody? Just got in a little while ago From the Louisville Card Show Probably about I don't know A little over two hours ago had to settle down, get some stuff put together, change out cases and everything. Overall, uh, it wasn't really heavy with dealers there. But there were some dealers that I've known and done deals with in the past. So I picked up one, two, three lots. I had to check what I spent. It was actually a total of $180 today. Uh, so not, that's including gas going up there, just so everybody knows. I just calculated like 10 bucks for gas onto it. So really happy with what I picked up up there today. Uh, it made a lot of sense. Some of this stuff you guys will see. Uh, a couple cards I'm going to send out for grading. A couple I got to look at yet. Well, I still got to look at them all to be graded. A couple holders and stuff like that there. So let's get into it overall. Oh, I should to knock out. You guys already seen a lot of the prices. Some of this stuff up there was really, really high priced. Um, I started looking and I didn't want to really want to finagle. So I'm just going to use this for example. Somebody has $500 on a card and I'm looking at the recent sales for the past three weeks or at 300. And I'm not even bringing it up to them. I'm walking by your table. That's just the way I am. Now, if we have some type of rapport built into, I might ask and just see offhand if nobody else is around. Because I don't like trying to say that in front of other people around and stuff like that there. Because then you... Let other people judge, you know, on somebody's prices. And if they think it's good, somebody might overpay for it. I don't know. There was a couple people that had vintage. I'm trying to think when I walked around up there. Uh, you got you guys seen some of the highlights from the video that I uh, got some video of it. Oh, gosh, I'm hoping now that video took us. I haven't even checked yet what the beginning of this video is going to look like yet. But it was some nice stuff out there overall. Like I said, not really a uh, very packed show. Even the guy who was running it wasn't set up this time up there because he usually has like the whole back row, which I was hoping he was because I was looking for a card in particular and I thought he would probably have it out of all people there. But we'll move on. We'll see. Maybe we could go down to Lexington next week because uh, I'm still looking for a couple pieces of the puzzle that I need out there. You guys ready? Ready to see what I picked up? Be kind of crazy, kind of crazy. Now, I know some of you guys are like, what? Why'd you buy these? So, um, originally, I bought these off of one guy. I know he's subscribed to the channel. Justin Fields, uh, red, white, and blue. A lot of people are looking for Fields. Now, it is off-center, top and bottom, but maybe I make it, maybe I don't. But I still would look the card over. I just stuck it in these for the time being. And then a Cade Cunningham, red, white, and blue. 
there is a divot right here onto it. It might come back a nine. I just got to look at it and decide what I'm going to end up doing with it. But, I mean, a $10 a card, it might be a no-brainer for what I paid if, uh, you know, onto it. If I squeak a 10, I squeak a 10. This one's really well centered. So I'm hoping maybe that divot that's in there, because I noticed about four other people had these had the same divot. Maybe it's a known issue out there. I'm not too sure. But idea was to buy these, grade them, resell, make a little bit of money, and put towards a Kenny Pickett auto down the road in Steelers uniform, in Steelers uniform only. And I am turned with the camera right now because of the way I'm facing, just in case anybody's seeing that. Picked these up off of one person. He gave them to me at 50 cents each. A bunch of Ben Roethlisberger's. I know he's going to be going Hall of Fame. So I figured I'm going to start picking some of the earlier stuff up. Not really. Auto. Oh, if I see autos, I'll grab them. If they're reasonably priced. But stuff like this here. I'm going to look at what like PSA 9s and 10s are doing out there. At $10 a card. But for 50 cents a card. No brainer for Big Ben, for me at least. So pretty cool for some Big Ben stuff, plus a numbered one out of 199. So I mean, not bad at all for me. All right. The next, I just gotta go through it to see where it ends. I got for like a dollar a piece, I believe, offhand, because we wrapped a bigger deal up with uh. Two of the next two cards, too. So, Drew Brees, this is, uh, I believe, 2001. Patriots, this has the jersey piece into it, some of the earlier stuff onto it. And either it's going to be Whatnot or eBay stuff. I think I'm going to start doing Whatnot once a month. I've been putting stuff back aside just for that. Kyle Pitts. Uh, a lot of people I see are wanting to buy Pitts stuff on Whatnot. Figured, hey, what the heck, we'll see what happens. Cam Newton, this is the Panini Black Friday um, piece on to it. Some people like him, some people don't, but I mean, for the price, I said, what the heck. Kevin Green, he was a monster. Oh, I keep hitting the camera. Sorry, guys. A monster to stealer and stuff on to it. So I figured I'd pick this up, numbered out of 100 from Black Gold. I don't know how many people remember these. Remember these pro views that used to have, like, the film inside of it? Dan Marino, something different. Donovan so McNabb, I always have people ask me about McNabb stuff, so I picked the jersey piece up onto it. Mike Schmidt, Stitch and Time. There was weird on this. I mean, it's everywhere from 2 to $14 on this, so I figured, what the heck. You know, Hall of Famer, Upper Deck. It has a piece of authentic uh, me uh, memorabilia. Go for it. Same with this. Robin Yunt, same thing. Game used uh, bat piece onto it. Figured, what the heck, we'll grab it. Long story is it'll end up being like a whatnot stream one day for all that stuff there. Added two more cards to the deal. I know when you guys see this stuff, you'll be like, why? Especially this card here, Antonio Brown, rookie auto. Antonio Brown stuff has gone down so much just because of his behavior and everything that's happened out there. But as a player on the field, he was one of the greats. Um, well, one of the greatest of that time playing, if not the greatest during that time frame for about four or five years. I'm not saying he's better than Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, and all those guys. But during this time frame, he was held as a number one receiver for many years out there with Bell in the backfield. He's always had a big wide uh, a receiver out there, too. Then you had Big Ben throwing to him. These probably go, I think what I saw was like $15 to $25. He cut me a heck of a deal on this. I'm like, what the heck? Let's get it. Roll with it. You know, don't know what will ever happen. I doubt he'll ever play football again onto it. But just being a piece of the Steeler onto it, something you don't see a whole lot of. I said, what the heck? We'll pick it up. Probably be a whatnot thing anyhow. Leonard Fournette. Still sealed by Panini. This was a redemption way back in the day. Leaf Limited. Four color patch. Rookie card auto. This stuff's cheap. Cheap. All this stuff, where this stuff used to probably be like $150, $200, has dropped so much in value out there. The picking this stuff up to me right now for myself is a no-brainer. And no means am I telling everybody to go out and buy this stuff. But when I find this stuff cheap, 
for just a, pa a, a patch auto, especially a RPA onto something, I might as well go ahead and get it. This is scratches on the case right here if you think there's lines into it. I looked at it originally. Just it's changed hands so much. I mean, will, will cards ever go back up like this? Maybe. Who knows? I still think he's a good power running back out there on the Bucks right now still. So, figure what the heck. Grab it, see what happens down the road with it. Very, very minimal into it. Less than the cost of a blaster box. Way less than the cost of a blaster box. So I was like, ah, I'm going to pick it up. Biggest one of the day, though, I picked up Magic Johnson out of 25. This is out of NT. So, really fan of NT. Always have been. Um, Immaculate, Panini One and stuff. And recently, again, this is not telling everybody to go out there and buy this stuff. But when you think about Magic versus Bird through the 80s, Larry Bird stuff very high priced right now, where Magic really isn't. Uh, in my opinion, one of the top 10 players of all times. And I know uh, this is something I've been explaining or saying a lot on the streams, is that a lot of these guys, because of where I grew up at, in my age being mid 40s i still picture them as the younger guys like my age even you know late 30s early 40s even i started looking at these guys doing like videos or you know whatever it is out there on espn like him larry bird jordan i mean is looking old you know nothing against he probably can still play and beat half people in the nba right now but I started looking at him. Nolan Ryan's documentary, it's out. Nolan's old looking. Joe Montana. Um, Dan Marino. John Elway. I mean, I started thinking about this. How much longer are these guys going to be around to sign? And I'm going to start picking up some stuff like it, whether it's sticker or not offhand. It's just, it's the point that that kind of stuff there I liked before COVID. And now that COVID's done, things are settling down and everything out there, it's time to start picking that stuff back up. Because if there's a spike in five years and it lasts, you know, two weeks, up two months, whatever it may be, and it gets stupid money again, I'll sell it. If not, I like this stuff, so I'm going to keep it and, you know, be part of what I have. It might go in showcases and all that stuff for sale later on. I don't know. You know, it, it's just really cool stuff. And it was the only. Magic Johnson auto, I believe I seen all day. I might have caught something else on camera and it just I didn't catch it right off bat. And I saw a couple Larry Bird pieces out there for four hundred, eight hundred dollars. I'm like, wow. Then I see magic stuff all the time selling for like a buck and a quarter to two hundred dollars. And I'm like, why is he so cheap compared to Larry Bird? Guys, I mean, honestly, let me know in the comments. Why do you guys think that, you know, Magic Johnson's cheaper than Larry Bird offhand? It, it, to me, it just, it's, you know, why? I, I don't get it. But there's a lot of things I don't get, you know. We'll just use wire brand new, like, NTR, NTRPAs of a NBA rookie worth way more than, you know, some of the top people out there with like Jordan's rookie cards and well, Bird and Johnson rookie cards, Wilt rookie cards, Kareem Abdul Jabbar rookie cards. It makes no sense still. I think we still got a lot of correction to do out there. Uh hopefully by the end of next year we see that. Well guys, hope you all enjoyed the video. Got to see some of the pickups. I will say whenever I go back on whatnot with you know a stack of stuff I'll let you guys know we can advance. Because I'll load the store up with different stuff. But I will have some videos of some pickups that I picked up between eBay and whatnot coming in throughout this week. Maybe even the beginning of next week. I should. I'm going to start recording me being on whatnot with some of my pickups too. Just to make it kind of cool and interesting with some of the deals that I'm getting on there. Uh, it's just some different video ideas coming out for next year. But pretty cool, pretty cool overall with this stuff. Really happy today. But, oh, that's what I was getting into. See, I, I get sidetracked too easily. 
as I start getting stuff in through the week, I'm not going to do separate videos. What I'm going to do is do different videos and splice them all together into one. So it might say Monday mail day in a chapter, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Just so you guys get like one video overall and you guys can just skip forward each day, see what I got in the mail and stuff. Darnet, guys. Take care. Have a good one. I'm out.